you know, we were talking about this, Travis. There's a lot going on around Aggie land. Of course, volleyball has been in action up until now. Football had their bye last week, and they're back in action this week against dun, 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 Arkansas, which is always a really close game, it seems like. Right. So, uh, yeah, we got football back in Aggie land again this week. It's been a hot minute. Yeah, those those Arkansas games have always been the most fun. I mean, they're just fun. Maybe maybe and I'm I know I'm biased because I'm from Dallas. So every time we got to go up to to Jerry World, uh, I got to see my family, see some friends, hang out there. But but you always were. It was an eleven o'clock game, and that was always a drag. But it was always fun. And I'm actually for one of my stories for the later this week. I'm going back to look at the 2017 game, which was Kellen's first. Um, and that was fun. You got Daniel LaCamera kicking a field goal to put it into overtime and Armani Watts getting an interception late in the game and in, 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 uh, overtime to, to seal the deal. Um, Kellen with that 89 yard touchdown run where he wasn't a touchdown cause they said he stepped out of bounds and he didn't. And I don't know. Do you, what, what do you remember about that game going back? I remember the touchdown run. Um, you know, the overtime, interception I mean Armani Watts had a couple of those he had one, another one against Tennessee in his career mm -hmm. uh, but as far as Arkansas goes I mean yeah overtime no big deal right there's only been three of those in the last five years uh or six years that they've had there in, in, in Arlington but um yeah I I'm kind of with you I mean from not necessarily from a fan standpoint but just from a media coverage standpoint it's nice to be at Jerry World because it it, it breaks up the monotony some i think mm -hmm. that there are plenty of fans that appreciate that point as well but i know that there is something special about being on campus and having that environment you've just never been able to replicate that uh up in up in at&t stadium so i just want that jerry world press box food man that macaroni and cheese oh, which i don't know with COVID 19 yeah your friends in the dallas cowboys beat are they still getting the same I don't know. I'll have, I'll, I'll, have to, I'll have to ask them. I haven't, I haven't asked anybody. But, yeah, the man, nothing beats the AT&T Stadium macaroni and cheese. Oh, Yeah, the so macaroni and cheese is, uh, is pretty legit. So, for back, that – Back we, when we I was at the Fort Worth Star-Telegram covering games up there, I used to always cover the, the Thanksgiving game. And I will tell this to my mother's face. That was the best Thanksgiving meal I've ever had Yeah. in the yeah. Harry World press box. So. Oh, okay. All right. I yeah. Never, uh, I don't know if uh, – well, I have been there at Thanksgiving, um, but I have not uh, been able to sample the food up in the press box. Oh, it's fantastic. So, that being said, another big A&M Arkansas bout. It'll be one at Kyle Field this year. And here's kind of something that I've been thinking about. You, 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 everyone talks about, players, fans included, how much – each year, it seems like A&M on paper is a much better team than the Arkansas team, and the records usually indicate as much. Uh, you know, one year, it's Arkansas comes after losing to North Texas, and there's all kinds of things like that. But yet, every game seems to be really close. And how much yeah. of that is a rivalry between the teams, which I think exists. Uh, enough players, enough coaches have claimed that that exists, or – the excitement for getting to play in a big time NFL stadium and, and, and something that makes that game feel a little more special is that's what, is that what has kind of brought the Arkansas team up to A&M's level per se in some of those years, because it's just, there's a little bit something more special about that. And to that end, is A&M going to have a little bit more of an advantage this year than a normal home field advantage because of how, much maybe you get a stronger a harder playing Arkansas team in Jerry world. Well, I think playing at a neutral site definitely helps whoever is the visiting team because they don't have to go to the other person's place. But uh, yeah, I guess so. Because in Arkansas, you know, a lot of those kids are from Dallas. It's it, it at that point, you know, it's always been against the first ranked team or generally the second ranked team that they faced that year. So a&M would have been the biggest first opponent that they would have. Um, and they're going in. They're wanting to, to kind of put whatever losses that they had had behind them. And, yeah, as you mentioned, typically it's been a slow start for Arkansas. But for some weird reason, this game, which usually occurs a month earlier than now, uh, usually is, is one that Arkansas really shows up for. And I, I think the fact that you do have a lot of Texas kids, uh, you've got a lot of DFW kids that are playing in it for Arkansas and for A&M, um, and the fact that Arkansas has generally been the underdog. And I don't know if A&M has, has 
I don't think A&M's ever taken them lightly in this game. Uh, but at the same time, with all the different pomp and circumstance around you in dealing with going to this big stadium and, you know, going on the road sort of, and, you know, a lot of the kids maybe seeing their family and friends that, that they haven't seen in a while, I think there might be a few distractions out there. And so you wonder if that might not play a, play a role in it. Um, it, we'll see. I mean, if, if you come out and say A&M just completely uh, demolishes Arkansas uh, and, and it's not really even a close game on Saturday, then I think you might have a, have a valid point. But I'm expecting another close game, honestly. Yeah, you just go back and think. I mean, any, any kid who's played sports growing up has done the whole bit where they pretended like they're the professional athlete. And what, what, whether that's, you know – being an, a little league player and wearing a batting practice top before, you know, and putting your jersey on or, or you know, in, in high school where your coaches make you wear a suit to class before they, you know, everyone is trying to pretend to be a professional. And I think there's something to playing at AT&T Stadium where some of these guys get to pretend to be a professional a little bit and and they they get to and that that kind of gets the juices flowing a little bit more so yeah we'll uh we'll see we'll see so um here here's the biggest rub with a m and in arkansas arkansas is a team that has it leads the nation in interceptions leads the conference in interceptions uh has really done a good job of 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 getting turnovers and and capitalizing on those turnovers uh turning those into points I know a lot of people want to see and have a lot of complaints about this A&M offense in the past and, and it's staying inside a 20 yard box and uh, not really producing a lot of explosive plays. Do you think that this is a game where you go ahead and put that on the shelf and say, we're going to play conservatively and make sure we have the ball security and, 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 and run the ball? Or um, do you, do you expect to see, a more wide open game plan, uh, something that that does a little bit more spread out, even though Arkansas has shown its propensity for creating points with the defense. I think so much of that being conservative reflects on Jimbo Fisher's coaching versus, you know, how a and uh, how the players respond and that sort of thing. I think that Fisher, in, especially in games in which A&M arguably has more talent on the field, will play more conservatively. I, I think they're going to have no qualms about handing the ball to Isaiah Spiller 20, 25, 30 times this game. Um, I, I think that they're going to use him a lot, much like they did against Mississippi State. You're not going to go to the air unless you absolutely have to. I think that's just kind of Jimbo Fisher's MO. It, in, in games where he feels that his offensive lineman can dominate the line of scrimmage, where A&M can, can create holes for that running back to run through and they can get that game that running game established, He's going to lean heavily on that. Now, that being said, are they going to completely go away from the pass? Of course not. They're still going to try and find some, some open lanes, some open receivers. Um, you know, I don't know how many guys actually have the big playmaking ability right now. It's, it's really hard to tell. It's hard to tell out of those wide receivers, those, that young wide receiving core, who's going to stand out. You know, Anaya Smith has gotten close to really having some breakout games. But I'm talking about, you know, the Chase Lanes of the world. Obviously, Caleb Chapman had, had – his biggest game against Florida, but then he gets injured for the rest of the year. So what's it going to look like when it finally, uh, finally comes down to the middle of the, of the season, who's going to be really shining and, and who's going to be kind of left behind. But um, I, I expect A&M will play conservatively. That's also why I'm expecting it to be another close game. The uh, it'll be a huge boost though, if they can get Hez Jones back. I think he's a guy, he has years under the the system, knows the playbook. Um, you just see how excited Kellen Mond looked when when people when we asked about who's looked good and he jumped out there right away and said he'll be back even though Jimbo Fisher said it might be a game time decision. Um, you got to think that that for Kellen Mond to kind of be that excited about it, he's a guy that that he trusts and and that could really bring something to that offense. Yeah, anytime you can get somebody with some veteran presence, you know, we mentioned they've got such a young receiving core with Jamon Osmond having opted out and Chapman having gotten injured. And uh, even, you know, even before Chapman, he's still a young guy. And so uh, any kind of veteran presence that you can get people with, with meaningful playing time out there at the wide receiving core, um, 
yeah, I, I think that's that's really important. And we'll see how big of an impact he's going to make. I wouldn't imagine they're going to just throw him into the fire immediately. He's going to kind of ease in a little bit. But, um, yeah, I think that that's really going to help them out as they move forward. If anything, just adding depth. Here, here's, my other, here's my other thought and, and, and potential key to the game. Arkansas comes into the game as literally one of the worst teams in kickoff defense. They average, uh, opponents average about 28 yards per kickoff return uh, every, this season. A&M is one of the worst in kickoffs because they've only, kickoff returns because they've only tried to return two kickoffs for 10 yards. They've uh, fair caught everything else that hasn't gone into the end zone. Is this a game where you see A&M try to actually bust out a few kickoff runs or is the, the thought process of this season just fair catch the ball, start on the 25, and, and let's go from there? Especially, it's a, it's a double-edged sword because Arkansas is a team that does not do kickoff return coverage very well, but forces a lot of turnovers. And do you want to continue that conservative thought process like we just talked about on offense into special teams, or do you try to let your special teams get you some points? Well, if we're aware that Arkansas is giving up so many yards on kickoff uh, coverage, then I'm sure Jimbo Fisher and company are as well. I, I would expect that this game, Jimbo's going to let those guys bring it back. Now, how they're if they're going to make they're going to do it the right way is another question. I mean, you saw initially from Vanderbilt, A&M has been kind of lost in the weeds when it comes to kickoff return this year, even in times where they had decided to bring it back out. It's been, uh, it's been interesting, to say the least. So, are you going to have those guys coached up? Are they going to know exactly what to do? Hey, if this ball's going over my shoulder, I let it go. If it's out in front of me, I run up to it, and I'm going to take it off with it. Um, but, I, but I would expect that A&M, Jimbo sees those numbers. He says, look, what's going to behoove us more is, uh, is calling fair catch and starting from the 25, or are we going to be able to get back to the 30, 35 and get our offense out there on the field? So, I think that uh, I think that we'll probably see those guys returning any kickoffs that are in front of the end zone. Sure, sure, Zach. What are you What are you interested? The most interested in this game? What are you looking out for? Oh gosh, uh, can A and M's secondary keep Felipe Franks in, in check? You know what they did against Mississippi State, and they really took a. You know, you you had guys taking a, a page out of the playbook that Kentucky had and a couple of other defenses who really shut Mississippi State down uh, and shut their quarterback game down. But, you know, Felipe Franks is a guy, he's a veteran quarterback. He's had a lot of big game experience. Can a and m secondary repeat what they did against Mississippi State? Can they shut him down in the passing game? You know, and he can pull it down and run with it as well. So that's another thing to keep an eye on. Um, you know, if the defensive line can get pressure, then, then I think that they're going to be, be just fine. But uh, the secondary is still the biggest question mark on, on A&M's &M's team. Sure. The, I mean, for me, it has to be how well can A&M take care of the ball. It's not been necessarily one of their strong suits. Um, and both of Kellen Mond's interceptions this year have gone for pick sixes, have directly resulted in, in points. And if you look at some of the, the two games Arkansas has won, Points from the defense have been vital in those wins. And so if, if A&M can take care of the ball, I think that is, that is the key to, to, to winning this game because Arkansas has proved it, can, it, can, it, it will capitalize on those mistakes. Um, so you've got to want to think that, that keeping possession of the ball and keeping um, uh, uh, time of possession high is going gonna, is gonna to be huge for them. Um, all right. Prediction time. Looking here, the spread is 2.5 in AM's favor. 12.5, excuse me. I was about to say. 12.5 in AM's favor. The over under is 55.5. Does Arkansas cover who wins? Any score predictions? What do you got? I think Arkansas covers. Um, what did you say the, the total point spread was? It was 55? 55.5 for the over under. 55.5 for the over under. Um, I will take, I'm going to take the under on that, actually. Okay. I'm going to take the under. I'm thinking, I'm thinking AM like 28 21, 28 24, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that sounds about right. Give me AM. 
27. 27, Arkansas 21. Okay. That would be the That's over. That would be the over, and Arkansas would cover, which is what I believe is going to happen. So, yeah. Uh, so two field goals, uh, two field goal difference between the between the teams. Okay. Interesting. It is Halloween night. It's a full moon. Crazy stuff happens, man. Well, are you are you wearing a costume to the game? Uh, no, I'm not going to wear a costume. I'm going to go as a uh, as a poor um sports director radio sports director which means i just wear whatever is not wrinkled in my closet mm, i i had two ideas but i'm not going to do them oh, one well one, one well because i don't i'd have to order things and i don't want to do that one i think it'd be fantastic to go as coach taylor from friday night lights <laughs> okay. they have some nice little dylan panther stuff on amazon or and i don't know if you're in on this this is my new favorite thing i could go as ted lasso Oh, but you'd have to shave the beard and just leave the stash. Yeah, I'd have to do that. And I mean, I'd have to get a little AFC Richmond sweater. But uh, if you haven't watched Ted Lasso on Apple Plus, let me tell you, that is, that is a great show. It's a fantastic so it's, it's, show. So it's a TV show now. It's a TV show, yeah. Oh, okay. Because I mean, I remember them coming out with the promo. Right. That they did with Jason Sudeikis several years ago, but I didn't know that they turned it into a TV yeah, show. Yeah, it was a commercial. of a, It was an American football coach who goes over and, and coaches in the English Premier League. And it was a goofy commercial they did when NBC got the rights to the English Premier League soccer. And uh, Sudeikis has turned it into a full TV show. And it is cool. fantastic. It is, is very campy. <laughs> it's cheesy. But, like, you're never going to leave an episode without a smile on your face. And it is hilarious. Okay. I'll have to check it out. So uh, it's worth, listen, I, you have to subscribe to the Apple TV Plus or whatever, but I, I, it's worth every dollar to watch it. It's great. It's okay. Absolutely fantastic. Check it out. So anyway, those are some Halloween costume ideas for you as we close this one out. Have a fun and safe Halloween. Be sure to watch uh, the Aggie football team take on the Arkansas fighting football hogs at Kyle Field for the first time in forever. On, on, thank, on Thanksgiving, Halloween, and uh, we'll be back here next week in some form or variety of capacity to break down more A&M football. So for Zach Taylor, I'm Travis Brown. This is the Mike Nation Podcast, and we'll see you next week.